these two talks are going to be unique ones. The first is master-disciple. Master-disciple is a unique relation beyond human imagination. It is not like the relationship between the friends. It is not like the intimate relation between husband and wives. Yet still it has the traces of all these. In a unique way, it is the relationship which cannot be put into the words. How does a relationship begin? First of all, the other, be it master, be it friend, be it spouse, has to become a quest within you. When something becomes a quest within you, a unique relation begins. If the master becomes a quest within you, a deep yearning, your whole life is transformed. Only you can allow this. And when this begins to happen, the disciple is on the borderline. The master becomes a deep quest, a deep yearning within the disciple. Only then the transformation is possible. And this only you can allow. The ways of the masters are very passive. He cannot be aggressive. He can create the situations for something to happen within you. Through his gestures, through his talks, through his mannerisms. But he always has to remain passive, never aggressive. All that is needed on the part of the disciple is to not to repeat the old pattern of many kinds of relationship with the Master. This is significant. All that is needed on the part of the disciple is not to repeat old patterns of many kinds of relationships with the Master. Let it be a new relationship which you have never lived something that you have never experienced before. Let it be absolutely uncontaminated by your past, by your conditionings, by your known. Let it be unique. And that is why I insist again and again that the disciple needs tremendous courage to be around the Master. The Master is very passive. He does not take his own initiatives never makes the first move. Let it be unique. That is why I again and again insist that the disciple needs tremendous courage to be with the Master. You leave oneself unguarded after so many lives of guarding, protecting and not letting anyone in has become almost your second nature. You do not allow anybody to enter in your innerness. You guard, you protect, just as a woman protects her virginity. To break through this whole structure and to rise ever is indeed great courage has to be there. It requires a great courage to break this whole structure and to rise ever with. Courage simply means risking everything. Whatsoever be the consequence, not thinking of the consequence, risking your very life, it is a gamble. The gambler puts everything at stake, either this, either he wins or loses. He is not afraid of losing. And only if you are not afraid of losing, you will win. If you want to protect your losing, then you can never win. You have never experienced anything like that before. How can you know? So you are putting everything that you know at stake for something that you do not know. You do not know what is going to happen. A gambler never knows what will be the next move of the other. But he is willing to take a risk. He puts everything at stake. Indeed, the path of truth is only for gamblers. Kabir says one who is ready to abandon even his house is ready for the path. 
means one who is ready to put even the house in state. Everything. House means everything, the protection. I am reminded of a Japanese film actor. He lived in Hollywood. Before the Second World War, earned much fame and money. So much so that now he has no need to work. He could live for lives in luxury. So he went back to Japan, but he wanted to see Paris first. So he went via Paris. He was staying in one of the most luxurious hotels on the topmost floor and there was a casino in the hotel. He went there. It must have been late evening and he staked everything that he had earned not even saving money for the ticket to reach home. He lost everything. And he went back to the room. There was complete silence because never before had anyone staked such a vast amount of money. Kings had been there. Emperors had been there. He defeated them all. And they all had sympathy for the man because he had lost everything on just one stake. In deep silence, he simply moved all around. Next morning in the newspaper, it was announced that the Japanese has committed suicide by throwing himself under a fast-running train. The hotel manager, the hotel staff and everyone who had seen that happen the night before immediately thought that this Japanese could not be anyone other than the man who has staked everything. They all rushed to the room of the Japanese actor. He knocked. He opened the door. He asked, what is the matter? Why is this crowd? They said, we are sorry, really very sorry, but we thought looking at this newspaper, the body was almost crushed into so many pieces that they couldn't not even recognize the face. Just from the passport, they understood that he was Japanese. So we thought perhaps you were the person because last night you staked everything and you lost everything. And these are the moments when people commit suicide. The actor laughed. He said, I am not the one. I had earned, I had staked, I have lost. I had earned, I had staked, I have lost. But it was only money. I have not lost myself. I can earn again and believe me, if I earn again, I will come again and stake again. I am not such a coward to commit suicide for money which any idiot can earn. Remember, I am not such a coward to commit suicide for money which any idiot can earn. It does not matter. If I had one money, I would have remained the same. I have lost the money, I am the same. Before I became an actor, I was with a master who taught only one thing, remain the same in every situation, good and bad, success or victory, failure and loss, everything. As long as you are there only a witness, this is going beyond the duality. He said, I had a good sleep and just now I was thinking from where to start again, but it has not scratched me even a bit. It's taking everything, knowing that you are gambling with the unknown. You may be victorious, you may be a failure, but it does not matter. You are not hoping for victory because that will become a misery if you do not succeed. You are not afraid of losing because then again you will be miserable. If you lose, having no conditions, you stick. I can speak on my own example. Many times lost everything. I had to borrow money which could not be repaid in time. The things were so difficult that there was hardly any money to meet even the basic requirements. And when you have no money, all the friends, the family, 
they leave you. They give you all kind of admonitions that you cannot do anything in life. Now, many times I have encountered those situations. The last time when the business, someone was helping, but his eyes was on the building that he wanted in his name. And so he was giving all kind of consolations and assurances that he is there to support me. And the day the building was transferred into his name, he showed the other face. He locked the house. For one week, I slept in the car, parked the car by the roadside, slept there. I asked his, one of his workers not to keep the gate of the compound closed and if I can use his toilet and bathroom. One week until I found the place, moved into that place, without having a scratch, began the life again. This happened many times. And being with a master, the beauty is that although you are taking everything for something unknown, yet just in front of you there is something, there is someone who knows the unknown who had been through the same process and had come back. This is true resurrection. There is no other resurrection except this dying, not knowing whether you will be resurrected or not. So never lose courage. Never be afraid of staking everything. When someone asks, the business is gone, business is gone, but I am not gone. My willpower, my courage, my ingenuity is still there. Continued. Again a setback came when I got the problems with my feet. Nearly two years, two and a half years I did not drive, could not drive, could not even one point, could not even stand up. I had to crawl. But that did not leave a scar in my me. And it is during that period when I could not walk, the two books were written. Meditation, the way to self-realization and the secrets of bhakti. Not even a single trace of those pains were there in that. No one can feel that. The beginning. Thereafter, the number of books are beyond even count. I do not remember how many books have been published since then. Then on the business front, because that was very essential for the part of my living, a new resurrection came. Never afraid of taking everything. But if you are with a master and you see, you feel the flavor of resurrection that gives you a tremendous impetus to be courageous to be with a master, to follow your inner voice, gives you tremendous courage and impetus to be courageous. It makes your dormant courage dynamic, alive and functioning. It is something like a small child walking by the side of his father, holding his father's hand. The father may be worried. There are thousand and one problems for him. But the child is enjoying the morning sun, the beautiful breeze, the flowers, the butterflies and he is asking questions one after the other. He has no worry. He is certain that giving his hand in his father's hand is enough and he is safe. To be with a master is to be in tremendously trustful atmosphere. So you can easily withdraw your guards, barriers and all protections. And now you can be vulnerable. You can be open to the very end. And if the master becomes a quest within you, certainly your whole life is going to be transformed. Certainly your whole life is going to be transformed. Only this much for this morning on this aspect of the master disciple.